Hey guys, this is Blake here. I'm going to be talking about Paranormal Activity 3. Now just to recap my feelings on Paranormal Activity, I loved the first film, and I liked the second film. I thought they were both really creepy. I liked how they were just really simple scare fests, really. But at the same time, these are movies that really exploit simple things like your house making creaky noises or uh, a door moving mysteriously. For me, when it's used right, it can really creep me out. I thought, for example, when I saw the Blair Witch Project a few years ago, you know, I was all alone in the house at night, and after watching that, I was so freaked out that every little noise my house make would, made would just, like, keep me on edge. I was, I'd be startled at the simplest of things. And that usually doesn't happen. I just want to make that point. Um, in fact, that's really one of the very few exceptions where I got genuinely freaked out um, by a movie. Although, strangely, I think I got freaked out when I first saw Scream, but that was like when I was 10 years old, so that doesn't count. Um, uh, so, that is what I think the Paranormal Activity movies really stress. They take these really simple and mundane things, you know, weird noises and you know, something moving mysteriously, and turn it into a horror film. And I thought that's what makes them, that's what makes them work. But uh, I can see why people would not like them. And I don't even mean that in a condescending way. I know like a lot of critics like, tend to complain now. Younger viewers, for example, are really shallow. Like They just want constant jump scares, constant action. There's no desire for suspense or build-up. Even if that's true, which I'm not sure about, with Paranormal Activity, you can be an old-school watcher and dislike them. Um, it just comes down to whether those little things creep you out. If they don't, you're going to hate these films. They're going to be so fucking boring to you. But with the first film, I still thought it was kind of a flawed film. Um, I didn't really like Mika, even though I thought he was kind of interesting. Uh, it is too many stupidity, <laughs> stupid moments there. And the second one was only slightly better in that regard. But uh, still, I think they're pretty good scare fests. But the third one, I really wasn't sure what to expect. Because when they released that first trailer, I thought it was really cool. It was creepy, but in a different way. And I thought, you know, that's what this movie needs. It needs to be creepy, but in a different kind of way. Because these types of movies, I think, will get old fast. And, um, and I just thought that was the right direction to pull. But then when I saw the second trailer, they went the complete opposite route. It was just constant jump scares. And uh, it, it came out of you with such vengeance that I was like, dude, did it just spoil everything? Well, luckily, none of the scenes actually appear in the movie, which pisses me off. I hate it when movies have footage in their trailers that don't appear in the actual film. It pissed me off when Black Christmas did it. It pissed me off when uh, Piranha 3D did it. But this one, I mean, I've never seen a movie use so much footage that doesn't actually appear in the film. And I, I mean, with the teaser trailer, they have kind of a variation of it with that whole Bloody Mary thing. And I don't mind that so much because I think it's okay when teaser trailers, you know, do it. They're just trying to establish the type of movie you're going to see. Like, you know, Terminator 2, I remember, did it with uh, all those Arnold Schwarzeneggers. And I thought that was pretty cool. And But with the main trailer, oh, God, that... I'm surprised that didn't sink this movie when that got out. So, there's two different ways this movie could have gone. Well, actually three. It could have been a complete rehash of the first two films. Some might feel that way, but I think if you really think about it, it does try to do its own thing. But there's two ways it can go from there. It could either be like Aliens, um, Terminator 2, where they take everything that we liked about the first one, but then go and do their own thing with them. Uh... So those two, I think, are like the best sequels of all time. And other sequels that did it pretty well, I thought, were Predator 2. I actually just watched that recently and I have a written review to do it today, to do today. But uh, even though it's a really flawed movie, I thought it did a good job with doing its own thing. Actually, I can't even think of any more. But then other times, uh, you could just cheapen it. And the best way I could describe it is, you know, Matrix Relo Reloaded was fun, but it also just stripped away the intelligence that came with the first one with the first one. Um, Blair Witch Project 2 is probably the most notorious example. I mean, I have to respect that it did try to do its own thing, but it sucked because of it. Or you can even be like Predators. Um, that movie does not hold up well, I think, on subsequent viewings because it's pretty much watching the first film, but they take away the suspense and the, the 
chilling atmosphere about it, and I thought that kind of cheapened that, even though it's still a pretty entertaining movie. This, unfortunately, is like that. It has a lot of... It gets things moving quicker. I can only imagine that the filmmakers really were trying to appease the detractors of the series, which is weird because I don't know why they'd even bother watching this one if they didn't like the first two. So, so they introduce scares a lot quicker. Um, you see and learn more about the demon. And I know I'm not the first one to say this, but the demon is pretty hilarious in this movie. Uh, they, they flesh out its personality more, and I thought that was kind of a bizarre decision, but it leads to some funny stuff. And uh, But there's not as much build-up, there's not as much suspense. I felt, even though there are some scary moments, as a whole, I would not call it a scary movie. You know, the first film, yeah, it starts off slow, but as it gets freakier and freakier, I mean, it had me. I was totally into it. I thought the second one, you know, did that pretty well, too. With this one, I mean, it had me in moments. That's all I could say. You know, I thought the babysitter sequence was really well done. Uh... I thought other sequences, they were, I, I liked, what, for example, this kitchen scare. I don't know if I should say any more than that. It's sort of a derivative from the cabinet sequence in the second one. But I actually thought it was better. Uh, once again, not everybody agrees with me there. Because mainly, I, when, when something is off, I don't even really, I didn't even really notice it at first. But when you see what is off, I thought it was really effective. But then there's other scenes, though, where it just you see too much, and it's just not as effective. Like, at one point, the ghost uh, lifts the girl up from her hair. Now, that's one of the more hilarious scenes. I laughed. But should you be laughing at a scare in this type of movie? Um, I thought the Bloody Mary sequence was pretty good in this film, too. Uh, I liked the guy who was with her, because it was a guy who was doing it. I know it sounds creepy. And that's not even the creepiest aspect of this movie when it comes to its human characters either. Uh, but uh, I thought that was still a pretty effective scene. And there are others, like I thought the finale was pretty good, even though it really is referencing another movie, I think. I wonder if that's kind of going to be a running gag, because the second film had this really huge reference to a movie called Wreck, which was remade as Quarantine. Um... It's not so much in story, but in how it, the style it was shot. This one, it does something similar to another found footage film, but it's more in story, so I don't want to reveal it just in case I spoil it. And as such, I really think that they tried to explain a lot of stuff, but in the end, I felt nothing was explained, and now it's really confusing. A lot of things that they reference in the first two films about their past don't really show up here, like the house burning down. They make a big deal of that. Never happens. Apparently it happened at some point because in the trailers they actually show a scene of a house burning, but never appears in the actual movie. I also, there's something with the mother too. They describe what happens to her in the first one or second, first or the second one, I don't remember which, that it can't really happen here. So I thought that was kind of bizarre. But, uh,. And the final scare sucked. Uh, I hated that. That pissed me off. In fact, I might have just said that this was a three-star movie if it wasn't for that last freaking scene. But then again, I kind of... It was one of those movies I think I realized that it wasn't that great the more I thought about it. Um, but it just... The script was really conventional. It comes across like they aren't really sure where they want to go with this story. And honestly, I think they just should, if they make a Paranormal Activity 4, they should just introduce new characters and stuff like that. Uh, I'm tired of this family. And the characters in this movie, they're okay. I thought the acting was really good. I thought the, the girls especially, I thought they stole the show. They were stunningly good. And I thought it was weird because they reminded me a lot of my own nieces. So that kind of freaked me out in itself. But the parents are... I thought they were generic, but they were also, I thought, more likable in general than the, the characters from the other two movies. Like, Mika, I thought, was much more interesting than the guy in this film, who I can't even remember his name. I think it was Daniel. But, uh, you know, Daniel, if I'm... No, wait, that's the guy in the second movie. I don't even know who the guy in this one is. But, uh, Dennis, I, I want to guess. But um, this guy is, I think, just more likable in general. 
But there are some stupid scenes, like, where he, he goes into, like, this major exposition moment, which is really clumsily handled. Instead of just showing wife, his wife, or his girlfriend, the proof that he actually has, that this thing exists, and then she just won't, ref she refuses to see the tapes when, you know, he brings it up, which always pisses me off. That's just really lazy writing. At least in the first film, when Mika was doing something retarded, I honestly can't see how they would have gotten out of that, so I could almost forgive the lazy writing. This one I can't. But just to wrap things up, you know, it's one of those films that I say, if you liked the first two, go ahead and watch it. It still has, I think, some of the good stuff that appeared in those films. Um, I liked how they set up the camera. I liked the fan thing, even though some people didn't. Um, I thought that was pretty clever. I thought the they go back to the more basic setup of the first film, where you're just watching a bed and a door, and you're not really sure where you want to pay attention to. I liked that. And this one, I think they actually add a mirror, which was interesting, too, that they'd add that. But uh, as a whole, it just doesn't work as well as the other two. It might be preferable to some detractors, because, like I said, it does kind of get the ball rolling quicker, but I don't think it's really good enough for detractors to necessarily go watch it. I think if you're on the fence, maybe you like the first one but not the second one, or maybe you were indifferent to both films, watch this as on, a, on DVD. But otherwise, I'd say if you're a fan of the first two, go ahead and check it out. If you're not, avoid. If you want to read my written review, just check the link in my description. Uh, that is it. There will be a Critiquing the Critics episode tomorrow. I'll see you later.